I first started beekeeping, I felt it would become a very patriarchal thing. It was about domination, oppression, honey yield. And I only started beekeeping three, four years ago through a lady who was in the uh, Hastings community called Angie Bilcliffe, who, strangely enough, Rebecca, who runs the cinema, had made a film about. And I saw the film, I went, oh my gosh, there's a connection here between Rebecca, Angie, why I started beekeeping, because it was Angie's kind of connection with these female workers, these worker bees. I mean, yes, of course, there's, there's, there's males in a, in a beehive as well, and we need them, but it's the fact that there was a connection between my friend Angie, Rebecca, this cinema, and the femininity of the hive that was felt very poignant and beautiful. So when I saw this film, seeing how much value she had in relation to the bees, I knew half for you and half for me, and going to market and going, it's worth 18 euros, but actually I think it's probably worth a thousand pounds or thousand euros, but you know, the majority of honey is mixed with sugar. Her, her honey was like, oh, it's really pure because I don't mix it with sugar. And that is a sign of a good beekeeper, I think, that you don't have to give sugar to your bees because you always leave enough honey, but it is conventional to give sugar to bees. That is normal practice. You have the big deep box where the queen is with her eggs, and then you have the super, and those are the honey boxes. And we put a queen excluder that stops the queen going up and laying, laying in the honey boxes. So then you can just conveniently take those boxes off and extract the honey. Yeah, and the queen is below, so you're not taking eggs. Yeah. So it's an artificial method that the, the queens have adapted to to benefit us, yeah? And there's, I'm not saying it's wrong, but it's, as you said, how much honey do we take? How much do we leave for the bees? And, and getting caught up in the idea that, oh, you've got to have honey, you've got to have a yield, which is, which is commercial. And which some people, as you saw with that family, part of me was like, they're surviving. They've got how many kids? They just need to get some money. That's why they, they're, they're trying to take all the honey. They're surviving. Yeah, but then there's the, the other side. Got me in the end, you what? The greed that got Yes, me in the end. it was the, the greed. Cat. And when you take it with that gratitude, mm. you know, it's like, wow, how many thousands of flowers have gone into that one teaspoon? And that's why it's got a, so. It's interesting that, that it, before pre, you know, like pre Christian times, uh, beekeeping was associated with female goddesses, and the the ancient Egyptians associated it with goddess, the goddess, you know, because it's matriarchal, but but also that reverence, and we don't have enough reverence, do we? Because we've been brought up in this industrialized society where there's, there's not that honour, you know. Bees die quick, they only live six weeks. You know, people go, oh, this bee was dying, I saw it, it was dying. Well, actually, maybe it's knackered, and it's done its dues, and it's been foraging for two weeks, manic, manic, manic. And that's the other thing, bees are quite full on. They, like, live hard, live fast. <laughs> it's a bit like us, there's a lot of similarities, that kind of, like, Gotta get out of it, gotta forage, gotta get it in, gotta get it in, gotta support my team, gotta you know, work as a collective. And and that's another side of beekeeping or, or, or observing bees, should I say, that's remarkable, is that if if we look at a bee colony as a society and how committed they are to one another, that's something to learn from as well. The winter bees live longer. They live for, what, six months? Whereas summer bees live for six weeks. So right this time of year, um, the queen 
queen's stopped laying, or she's she's laying her winter bees, and they the boys die. They, they're kicked out of the hive because the colony must reduce to five thousand and keep the warmth of the queen, and they spiral through the winter. And then come February, you see the crocuses, and the queen starts laying again. It's this amazing cycle. This is the pollen. So bees need to bring in a pollen, yeah? So this feeds their babies. Yeah, the bee, they call it bee bread. And when we're teaching children, because our woodland apiary is, is all about the children's therapeutic nature and creative projects. And um, we actually make our own version of bee bread around the farm mm -hmm. and how important the bee bread represents the protein. Yeah. Um, there's a child there, actually. That, They've just learnt to um, let them operating their own hive with my supervision, and she's 14. Yeah, which is fantastic. It's the first time that she's actually helped to operate this tiny hive that then actually developed from being a tiny nuke, we call them nucleuses, to being a thriving hive. This is at our woodland site. Um, we always share around a fire. The circle is really important. When you're, you're, it's the idea that everyone is equal around the circle, and there's lots of cups of tea involved because we're British, of course. We need a cup of tea. Um, go, go on to the next slide. Um, okay, so if you are interested in planting for bees, purple, white flowers, purple and white and pinks, and for flowers that are open because they can land nicely, or, or shrubs, where you have lots and lots and lots and lots of tiny, like lavender, for example, or thyme, or trees, or privet hedging, where they can forage loads at the same time. Uh, you'll get bees going out to 2,000 flowers a day, one bee. So on each visit, they need to forage on the same plant. So it's much better to have a mass of one thing um, but that's a girl bee. Yeah. Okay, this is at our woodland site. Over there is our tree hive. We don't take any honey from that. This is in the winter. Um, we work with kids who've got really complex needs, emotional needs mostly. Um, he, he just lost his mum of an overdose, and we just planted a tree over there, an apple tree near the hives. And he was so pleased that he'd roped, it was his idea, he wanted to put rope around because he was concerned that the wind might blow the hives. So it's that idea that even when you've, you've had loss, the bees represent new life. Um, so yeah, we'll hopefully be working with him again. Um, but this is on our woodland site. Um, so that's a frame of honey. And you, you, you cut the wax off, and then you spin the honey. But um, there is something about holding a whole frame of honey. Do you get that feeling? It's really heavy, and it's really special as well. Um, that's in the garden. If you ever want to keep dark bees in a garden, and you're in, 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 in a city environment or a town environment, the key is the flight path. Make sure that you're not going to collide with your bees or your neighbour's going to collide. <laughs> so propolis is, is brought, it's a resin, and they bring it in from the trees, and um, it's all over the hive, it's really sticky. Is that what you see on the back of it? Yeah, that's pollen. Oh, They've got little handbags on their knees, yeah. little handbags, and they bring the, put the pollen in, that's their bee bread. And, but the propolis they bring in specifically because it's antibacterial, antifungal, antimicrobial, and they line the queen's um, egg chambers with propolis because it's a sterile environment. But we use it, I use it in the skincare for eczema, psoriasis, I, I use it in, I make a rum tincture, I gargle with it, um, I put it in my healing ointment that I'm selling over there if you're interested. Um, so propolis is a great ingredient if you've got any spots, zits, scratches, sore throats, use it as an immune booster. But as beekeepers, you just literally chip the resin off the tops of the frames. There's loads, it's really sticky, it gets everywhere. I don't know if we've got any other images. 
that's the product, that, that, that's my product range. And the logo is designed by our local artist Zero, and it comes from uh, the idea of negative graffiti. And they created a moth with a similar design that was all around Hastings about 10 years ago. And it, you put a stencil on the wall and then you rub off the dirt and then you're left with the stencil, with the clean areas that you've rubbed off. And it's a sort of protest around pollution. So they're the guys that designed our bee, which I think is quite bold and special. So back from the products, it supports the therapeutic work we do. That's the vision. I don't really make enough to live on, to be honest. But one day, you know, one day I work with Egg Tooth, a brilliant charity I work with, local charity with youth. So my mate here, um, he's bipolar, and he's an amazing guy. And he said, oh, can I come and hang out with you and see the bee? And this is the tree hive you don't take honey from. You take the bottom off, and he stood underneath. He said, you need to wear a hat. And you stand underneath and the wild comb is underneath and the bees are just doing their thing. And he was like, oh, just like, oh I have a sort of special a spiritual experience. And it just it fills you with awe and wonder. So thank you. And yeah, I hope the film touched you as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a bit special. 